Okay, it's there. That hurt. I think it looks a little bit too industrial, I guess you could call it. Hello everyone, welcome back to Maverick Mods. Working on the Firebird again this week. Basically taking it apart. It's uh, it's coming apart for final sandblasting, final cleaning, final welding, and paint, and eventually reassembly. But I do have a few things remaining to finish up. Little beautification items on the wheel well panel, uh, wheel well covers I made. Uh, working on door gaps, uh, mounting the radiator. That's a biggie. So we're going to cover that today. So grab your popcorn. Let's get started. Before I move on to uh, bigger and better things, aka my radiator mounts, I do need to finish up one last thing on my fender well covers. Of course, you saw me fabricate the covers, you saw me get all the everything worked, I'm working on finishing up my seams, but the one thing I didn't do, which is kind of a necessary portion of any project like this, is follow through or finish up. So you saw me use sheet metal screws to um, uh, kind of put everything in place. But that's not going to be, in my eyes, that's not going to be good enough for the finished product. So I went down to the hardware store. We've got a local hardware store that has a really, really good uh, nut and bolt section. And I got some, these are 1024 screws that use an Allen head, bl a black oxide coated. And I'm going to go through everywhere where I have a sheet metal screw. I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to uh, substitute with these. And I've got nuts that I'll put on the back side of the fender well itself, just kind of tack weld those in place. That'll wind up being my finish fasteners for the wheel well covers. So now that I'm to the point of uh, finishing the fab work, I've got to think about the finished look of the uh, car itself. So I'm not going to show all of it. I'm just going to uh, work on that for a while. We'll come back, take a look at kind of the intermediate and then finished product. Okay, I think it's presentable enough. Essentially what I did was just cleaned up some of the extra holes. I replaced all of the self-tapping sheet metal screws with uh, button head uh, Allen screws. They're all 1024 screws all the way around. And in here, there's uh, four in here on the uh, inside panel, just because they're easier to access from the inside than from the outside of the wheel well when everything is going to be kind of crammed in here. So it just pretties it up a little bit and it kind of makes it a little bit more presentable. That's kind of the idea. I've been working on the doors, getting the gaps where I want them on the doors. And um, well, I got the passenger side door done because that was basically just like the, just like the deck lid. Had to add uh, some welding rod just to a few spots to get it uh, uh, tighten the gaps up and that worked good driver's side door here is a little bit different i did a, a final check made sure that my door is positioned exactly where it needs to be so uh you know based on its the physical location of the door is where it needs to be my gap is right where i want it without doing anything right where i want it and it was good up to this point right here but unlike the other times when I did gaps it started tightening up to the point where it was basically touching up here at the quarter panel so I don't think when I did the deck lid I actually addressed this type of gap repair or gap adjustment I started working on this and it had, I basically forgot that I didn't do this on the deck lid. So, uh, you know, now I could have said I lost the footage and so that's why I didn't show it. No, I don't do that. I'm not a, the dog ate my homework kind of a guy. I just flat didn't think of it and didn't think to film it. So I got part of it done and I'll show you just the very last bit of finishing this up just so you get an idea of how this type of gap adjustment can happen. So let's take a look. When you're adjusting gaps and you want to widen the gap out, it's actually a little bit easier. So I marked where it started tightening up, which was down here. 
And then I just took my grinder and I basically just ground the door edge back. Now let's open this up and take a look, see. So you just ground the edge or grind the edge back a little bit past where you want your actual gap to be. And then you just take and you just tack the edge itself back and you're adding a little bit of material. You want to go a little bit farther out so that you have to grind and or file down the edge to the exact edge you need and then you can just smooth it out. The one thing you do have to watch out for is, now I've done from here up to here, I've still got a little bit of uh, filing to do to, to fix the edges, etc. But here is where I'm working on yet. I've ground this back. I left this little corner here, so I've ground this back. And you notice that I've actually ground through the skin and the lip. So what I'll have to do is I have to come in and I'll have to just kind of clamp this back together just a little bit to hold it when I stitch weld this. Another thing to consider too is if you've got a fairly large area like this to do, I did this in small increments. So I did this first, then I came and I did this, then I came and I did that. So I'm working on this area here. So you don't have this great big area of the door that all of a sudden pops open. So you do a little bit at a time and it's just easier to control and easier to manage. So what I've got to do here is I need to stitch weld this. You don't have to get fancy when you got to squeeze these back together. I just took and took some uh, pliers, channel locks, whatever, and just kind of very gently just squeezed it back together and just hit a few spots to tack it. That'll hold it and it's, uh, it's held it back together. Now I can stitch weld the rest of this. And what I'm trying to do is, I remember, I'm trying to build up just a little bit because I ground back just a little bit past the point of where I want my edge to be. All right. We got the grinder out. I'm gonna hit both edges first and then I'll work on the face. Okay, now let's switch over. I'll close the door again, and I should have to continue grinding to open that gap to where I need to be. Let's see. Okay, so I can tell that I've still got some more grinding to do. Take your gap tool, right where I'm at. Okay, right there. Now, obviously, I got still got some more to go. So you just very slowly, just take a little bit at a time, check it, grind it, check it, grind it, check it, until you get the gap where you need to be. Okay, it's there. Okay, I've got my gaps looking really good. I like that. They're still a little bit rough. I need to get after it with a file to uh, just kind of round it, smooth it, and believe it or not, some sandpaper, you know, put it on a DA. Just uh, that'll be kind of the final finish on that. But the gap is good. I'll work on this with a file for a few minutes. So then we'll go on to the next phase of getting this door aligned the way I want it to be. With my gaps where I want them to be on the back, I still haven't done the front yet. I got to do that yet. That's going to be basically just like it was on the deck lid where I'm going to have to use some filler. The gap here is going to be a little bit wider all the way from bottom to the top. Kind of has to be because of the way the door and the fender interface. I can't really tighten them, you know, down to my, what is it, uh, 3 sixteenths. That actually causes interference issues here at the uh, door and the fender. However, my door fits exactly where it needs to be here at the bottom. My gap is consistent all along the bottom edge of the rocker panel. My gap here, other than the fact that it's, you know, uh, differences in the panels here, my gap is pretty consistent all the way up here and 
I'm consistent along my the face of the panel itself. So the front of the door is where it needs to be. The back of the door, same thing. My gap at the bottom and my spacing at the bottom on the face is perfect. I'm perfect here. I'm perfect here. I'm perfect here. But as you can see, as I go up from about right here, the entire door edge, or the entire door panel itself, sinks in. Okay, now this is a factory door panel, but this is not a factory quarter panel. I don't think the quarter panel is a problem. I think this was just bad door panel gaps back in 71. They didn't care. So I've got option one to try and pull this out. I don't think it's going to work because that's a lot to have to pull out. I'll probably have to go to option two, but let's try option one first, which is just a slide hammer with a, uh, a, a, a hook on it. Let's get the slide hammer out and see if I can adjust this to uh, pull the entire face of this door panel out. So I've got my slide hammer and just a little hook. There go. All right. so let's start down here. See if we can pull this out. That hurt. Don't get your finger caught in the slide hammer. Well, it's working a little bit. It got it out some, but it's not going to get it out enough. So we will have to go to plan B. And oh, by the way, if you get your finger caught in a slide hammer, that's what happens. All right, well, I'm nursing my wounded finger. At least I don't have any wounded pride to have to worry about right now. So what I did, you notice before where it was, it's really close now. In fact, it's about as close as I'm going to be able to get it. I can fix the rest of this with filler. I've got a little bit of a high spot here. A little bit of a low spot there. What I did was I need to open the door and in here in the inside edge I just took my dead blow hammer and just kind of tapped along here and along here just to kind of move this entire face out okay and so my my focus of the bending moment is going to be along here and here instead of out here on the door. So it, so it doesn't affect the flatness of the panel out here. It just moves that entire panel out. So basically I got it out, do a little bit of adjusting here and there, a little bit more of the slide hammer, and I've got it about as close as I'm going to be able to get it. So, yeah, like I said, I can maybe work on this corner, or maybe I can work on this edge right here just a little bit more, but it's good here. It's good here. It's a whole lot better than it was to start with. Item number, what are we up to? 3,644.2 of 15,000 things left to do is to fab up the radiator, radiator mounts into the Firebird. So this is the radiator assembly from the Z28. You've got the air conditioner, condenser, radiator itself, electric fan setup. This as a unit is going to go into the Firebird. And so I'm going to try and adapt the factory mounts in a way. I couldn't take them off of the Z28. But basically, so we've got a rubber isolator here, which is, it's, I know it's kind of weird, but I think I can duplicate uh, some kind of a bracket to fit that. On the opposite side, uh, I've got just a, uh, a rubber pad, which goes right there, and I'll fab up a bracket that that'll fit into. And on the top side, on the top side, for our upper radiator uh, hold downs, whatever you want to call it, here's the factory piece, and this is basically a combination radiator support and uh, air box. I can't make the air box work because the air box is right where the hood latch on the Firebird goes. But this thing just slides into our, it kind of encapsulates on the ends here, on both ends. 
right there. And of course, the radiator is angled on the Z28. Don't know if I'll be able to duplicate the exact angle, but let's let's see what we can come up with. And let me get this in the car and let's take a look at uh, what we're looking at here. How much of the factory stuff can I adapt versus having to fab up my own brackets? Let's find out. So the good news is that the radiator fits in the opening really well. I mean, I'm basically at this point, I'm resting on the core support. I've got plenty of room. Nothing's going to hit, nothing's going to bind. I've got plenty of side-to-side -side room. I'm just about centered, about right there. And this looks good. First thing I need to do is figure out how to make my mounts down here and yet clear everything. And then from there, let's see what it's going to take to kind of work on something up top. I made myself a couple of brackets. There's the uh, one on the passenger side. There's the one on the driver's side. It's already got the rubber uh, mounted to it. It just had one of those little pinchy, pokey, you know, holder thingies on the rubber. So that's in there. I went ahead and tacked them both in place. I was trying to come up with a way to, un to bolt and unbolt those, and I thought about it, you know, eh, why? So let's go ahead and put the radiator in, see how it fits. And there we go. It's almost like it was made to go there. Now, the angle that I put that at, kind of, it wants to rest naturally about right here. That's a pretty good angle, I think. When you're fabbing parts, it's seldom that you waste time because even a failed attempt sometimes gives you good information or useful information. While I was working on the upper radiator mount, that actually came into play. I originally thought maybe I could use the original uh, Z28 plastic upper radiator cover and you're gonna see me work with that just a little bit I cut out a ton of working with that piece and and eventually I figured out I couldn't use it um, so here's just a, a little couple of little clips about me using that plastic piece and you can disregard that a little bit later in the video let's go ahead and test our upper cover see what it looks like I want to keep trimming this even though I may not use it in the end I want to keep trimming this until I kind of know that it's not going to work all right well I cut the uh, plastic piece down to the point where it fits where it's supposed to be it's solid I've got it tie wrapped in place right now I I think it looks a little bit too industrial I guess you could call it I think I'm probably going to make the fabricate up something that's just just looks a little bit better than that. I mean, this was never designed to really be the the top portion because it had the air box uh, with the air filter underneath it, and then the air box over the top of it. So, you know, it 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 just looks a little industrial to me. This is why you mock things up before going jumping in with both feet even though i kind of jumped in with a foot and a half modifying this piece right here so when i test fit everything with the radiator right here life was good until i closed the hood and i didn't have hood clearance mainly around the uh the radiator cap but i didn't have hood clearance up on this corner either essentially it's hitting right at these spots right here on the hood. So, back up, plan B, angle the radiator back a little bit, which in the Z28 it was angled back anyway, so it's no harm, no foul. And uh, it actually makes a few things easier because on the Z28 the radiator was even a little bit closer to the engine than I've got it right here. So some things are going to fit better. The steam port, the upper radiator hose, the air conditioner lines, the, you know, certain things are just going to fit better anyway. But I still had to lean it back. So again, not really a big uh, issue. This is all part of mock-up, all part of test fitting. I've double checked and verified. Hood closes well, and the way I can test this is, although you can't see it, I can stick my hand up in here, and I can feel space 
between the radiator cap and the hood on this side. And between the top of the cover and the hood on this side. So I've got good clearance. In fact, I can actually move the radiator. So I know I've got good clearance now. Since I couldn't get enough clamping force to get enough, basically, clamping force on the radiator to hold it in place, I had to back up, go to plan B. My location is correct, just my original idea sucked. So let's go uh, think more inside the box instead of out, or would that be outside the box instead of in? Um, we never got a set of upper radiator mounts, or we never got the upper radiator mount for the Firebird itself which normally would clamp to this flange right here or bolt to this flange right here and it but i would hold the radiator straight up and down obviously a little bit lower than what this one is so my idea here is i still want to keep my rubber pads but i got basically i have to build a new mount for them and locate it in this area so i kept my my uh, failed attempt here only to hold the radiator in place started making templates you know me and templates so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, what I've done is I've cut a piece here that's going to form basically a channel, uh, one side of a channel that's going to hold that rubber mount on the radiator, brought it back, and here what I need to do is I need to basically have enough of an area back here that it'll basically hold just enough clamping force on the radiator to hold it in place but at the same time not without distorting the core support i had to go this far back because of the idea is i'll have one bolt in the rear one bolt up here and then that will just hold that in place it'll hold the radiator in place but i had to come this far back because underneath here there's a support structure under the core support here and I had to go far enough back that I can actually drill through and put a nut on the back side. So that's why this piece right here is as long as it is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut four of these out of eighth inch steel. And we'll come back, revisit it, test fit them, and press on with the part two of plan B on the radiator. Or is it plan C? Got my first piece cut from my pattern. Let's do a quick test fit. It's going to slide over there. Basically going to fit right there. And I went ahead and cut away part of the plastic here. So what you're seeing right here is the actual rubber piece. And I'm thinking that we're in good shape. I got plenty of room. All right, I'm going to have to cut three more of these outside, inside, and over here, outside and inside. So I've got uh, all four pieces, hopefully as close as they're going to be to identical as can be. Let me pop these apart. We'll get them over on the Firebird and uh, start working on the next phase of making some radiator mounts. All right, so I ran my pieces through the sandblaster just to clean them up a little bit because they are going to have to weld them a little bit later. And so next thing I need to do, I need to actually create two pieces out of these four that will go on either side. And so I need to create a channel that my rubber piece can fit inside. So what I need to do, I'm going to take the factory plastic piece and measure that. I come up with there about 0.86. If I measure these, these measure out to 0.79. So I'm going to kind of split the difference, call it about 0.82 ish, something like that. Now what I figured out was I need to just make some spacers. Stick with me here, you'll figure, you'll you'll see what I'm thinking. So I took a couple of nuts. These are just uh, uh, three eighths nuts. I need 0.83, and there I've got 0.76. And I've got a couple of washers over here. So what I'm doing basically is I'm just stacking these nuts and these washers until I come up with 0.83. So that's the two nuts and two washers and I come up with 0.84 
I'm well within the ballpark. By the time I uh, tighten everything down, I think it'll go ahead and work. You grab the bolts that I used before. So there's my stack. Do one on the back side, same thing. Now I'm going to take this piece, stick those together, stick my nuts on here. Now when I tighten these up, in theory, it should be even all the way across and I should have the gap that I need on the inside to fit my rubber piece. Uh, with my pieces tight, I went ahead and laid them flat on the bench. Hopefully that'll make sure everything is nice and flat and square. Let's check my depth here. I come up with 0.84. I think I'm in the ballpark. I mean, it's a little narrower than the plastic piece and my rubber piece fits in really nice. Got just a, just enough wiggle room that I think we're gonna I think we're gonna work out just fine. So what I need to do now is I need to actually make the cover piece, the top piece here, that will box this in, at least on the top side. And then I can think about actually mounting them. I will have to trim a little bit of my uh, uh, core support just to make this fit, but I think we're gonna do okay. All right, so I went ahead and uh, cut and uh, tacked in my filler piece. Before I get too all fired crazy with this though, I probably ought to test fit things. Let's go ahead and, I mean, it's, I'm pretty sure it's gonna fit here, which it does. But now I need to come back and I need to figure out how much of my core support I need to trim away. And so I'm just gonna kinda eyeball this. That looks pretty darn straight right there. All right, so I need to cut away this little corner here in my core support so that the uh, bracket will fit flush and square. Ooh, that's still a little bit hot. All right, I've got the, uh, uh, what are these, uh, radiator support arms. I think they're pretty well done. I went in and put some tabs, drilled some holes for uh, hold down screws and kind of adjusted the height a little bit. Let's uh, stick this one on. I've got the other one in. Let's put this one on and see how it fits. Radiator is secure. It's not going anywhere. I'm triangulated on my uh, hold downs. I'm also tying into the core support up here as well as on the sides and the back here. That'll uh, give it, you know, lots of strength. Uh, almost done with the radiator. Next, I need to make a closeout plate on the top, some on the sides. I'm kind of thinking on that. I'm going to hold off a little bit because I think I want to do some brushed aluminum up here because even though these are going to be painted probably black, this is like front and center when you open the hood. So I think this has to look good. And I'm thinking brushed aluminum, but uh, I'll grab some pieces of aluminum and start fiddling with that and see if I can make it look pretty. Now that I have the radio, the upper, uh, all right, let me try that again. Now that I have the lower and the upper radiator mounts secured, I've got the radiator secured in place. Got two pieces left in the puzzle. We're going to work on one of them today, and the last one, even though it's related, is going to wait for a little bit, and I'll tell you why. So this next piece of the puzzle is, let's take a look. So here's the front of the radiator. Actually, this is not, this is the air conditioner condenser, but this is the front of the radiator. The opening, of course, is going to come through the grills, a little bit between the valence and the uh, bumper itself for airflow into the radiator. All good so far. The difference is that the original Firebird radiator was uh, wider, I guess, and shorter. And so that's what this opening is designed to accommodate. What I have here is I've got a radiator that's a little bit taller, but it's narrower. And what's gonna happen is, as the car is going down the road, airflow 
will take the path of least resistance. And you want the air going through the radiator or through the condenser and the radiator to help cool things off. However, if the air can hit this and kind of spill around and go around the side here, then it's going to. And that's not good because it'll cause cooling problems. So what I need to do is I need to create just a, just a, a block off plate. It doesn't have to be fancy, just something that will cover this opening to the edge of the condenser on both sides in order to help direct the airflow and keep the airflow going through the radiator. I'm gonna do one on the top too, but we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Let's do the sides first. Well, I've got my core support, my radiator all set off the car now. It's sitting on the, the bench and sawhorses. To get my filler piece, I went ahead and cut a test piece just to kind of work on the angles. Uh, this is obviously not going to be the, the final piece. So the idea here is I'm not too worried about covering way down here at the base, but I do want to get the bulk of it covered up here. Um, so the idea is I want to have a lip. Uh, with probably with a piece of uh, you know um, rubber gasket or you know foam something in here that'll sit right here and it'll just kind of butt up against the air conditioner condenser and bring it up and instead of my test piece stopping here the actual piece is going to come up a little bit higher and overlap all along here to give me a flange I can just screw the whole piece into. That way it's removable if necessary. So I just wanted to get this so that I could get the angles right and kind of get a picture in my head. Start over here. That goes that way. Right here. All right, so I should be able to cut this out and then duplicate it for the other side because the measurements are the same. So let me cut this to start with and let's see where we're at. First piece is gonna sit right here. Now what I need to do is I need to take and make my bend here and my bend here. You always gotta make sure you bend the right direction. And of course in my case, I put the marks on the wrong side I just need to take a 90 on this, easy enough. Now in order to make this bend, it's got to go the opposite way, <clears throat> and it's not going to fit in the sheet metal brake. Just to see if we can pull it. Okay, once I get this up, just tap tap with the hammer. All right, let's take a look and see if it fits. I think I'm finished adjusting it. It fits pretty darn well. I went, I fixed my notch here a little bit, fixed my notch back here a little bit. I'm sitting flush where I need to be. I'm lined up, but I do need to trim my flange here. So let's just go ahead and mark that. All right. Did not slice any fingers off in the making of this metal. Okay, one final test fit. Still needs a little bit of cleanup, but I'm pretty happy with that. Now, let me just go ahead and get some sheet metal screws. Okay, there's one side. I'll still have to work on this side, but this gives you an idea of what I'm doing here. Like I said, uh, to secure this down here, I'm going to wind up a little foam strip down here. And, of course, there will be a, a on the top down, there will be a, another block-off plate to cover this area as well. That one is going to be a little different than the sides here. And I'll probably do that after I start putting the car back together. This gives you an idea of just uh, what it takes to make a sheet metal block-off plate. It's not that hard. So you might have noticed... There's actually a part two to making this panel. You might have noticed that it it was a little floppy. Um, you know, I mean, the sheet metal doesn't really have any, any strength to it. I'm going to use my new bead roller and see if we can put a little, uh, uh, you know, just a little strength in this panel. I haven't got the faintest idea what I'm doing. I'm still learning how to use this thing. 
but we're gonna give it a try. And I'm just, I'm guessing here. I'm just, I'm, um, got it up against the fence. Just kind of adding a little bit of pressure every time, rolling it back and forth. Oh, got out of the line there. Always color between the lines. Um, it, it's not the best. It's not the worst. Let me uh, uh, flatten this out just a little bit and uh, let's stick it back on for a final look-see. Okay. All right. Oh, man. That, of course, right here, that's going to be that way, but not nearly as floppy as it was before. Okay. It's not the best. It's not the prettiest, but it worked. Okay. I'm going to duplicate that on the other side and we're going to call that good for now. To finish off today, let's do an update on where the Firebird is at the moment. As you can see, it's uh, not quite disassembled back to its individual components, but it's close. So, and the rest of the shop, let's take a quick pan around real quick. Uh, of course, deck lid and uh, tail panels, both doors, hood. There's a transmission. Uh, I'm still working on uh, some HVAC components here. Ton of uh, just various uh, engine parts, fuel lines, brake lines, tail lights, you name it, it's over there. Over here, we have a freshly washed and working on getting completely cleaned up LS1. There's my new bead roller. Core support, we saw me working on that today. Uh, parts and pieces everywhere. I've still got a ton of stuff up here that's going to come down. And a table full of exhaust components, headers, parts and pieces I've already pulled off. I don't know why this is sitting here. Let me get that off. Okay. Parts and pieces everywhere. The pile is going to grow along. It's going to diminish, but it's going to grow first. So here's where we're at on the Firebird itself. It's uh, basically disassembled now to the point where it's, it's a roller, but it's otherwise stripped down. I still have to pull the suspension off of it, uh, the rear. I am doing the final fitting on the dash. At this point, I'm just, uh, we've got it in position. Now it's just a matter of getting some brackets and getting the uh, top portion of it finished up and fitted and get the last of the HVAC components fitted behind it. So it's close. And up front, we'll have to pull the suspension apart, pull the subframe off, and do some final work on the firewall. So at this point, this is where the Firebird's at. And in fact, the next time you see it, it'll be on the rotisserie, and I'm gonna be doing a ton of welding to uh, uh, kind of finish the uh, shell up. So that's where the Firebird is at, at the moment. Well, that's gonna do it for this week, guys. Got a lot of work done, got a lot of work done over the last week, two weeks, last several weeks, with obviously a lot of work yet to do. Next time you see the Firebird, she'll be back up on the rotisserie and I'll be elbows deep in welding and finishing up everything on the shell prior to sandblasting it. I'll throw in a Firebird update as often as I can. Like I said a few episodes ago, the next few weeks is just a lot of drudge work. Not a lot of it is very photogenic and camera worthy. Some of it will be, and I'll try and keep you updated as much as I can on that. I certainly do appreciate everybody watching. Thanks all you guys for tuning in every week. If you like this video, think about giving me a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe, maybe share it, maybe do something else, whatever else you're allowed to do. I'll see everybody next week. Have a great day.